Hello everyone, Elias5891 here with another Katane module tutorial. Uh, actually going to be hitting up three this time. Uh, symbolic password, turn the key and wire placement are on the schedule here. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, we'll take a look at turn the key first. I have four of those. Uh, they look very simple. The rules of them are super duper simple. You've got a key. You've got a timer. When the bomb's clock matches the timer on the module, you turn the key. Easy peasy. Uh, of the four that we have, the first time is 1536, that's in four minutes, so we'll come back and check on this here in about four minutes. Next up, let's uh, while we're waiting for that, let's look at symbolic password. Uh, for symbolic password, you're gonna have six uh, symbols on a grid. Uh, you're going to have these buttons, white buttons along the edge with arrows that tell you what they do. These are going to scroll your symbols around. The idea is to find this particular combination of six symbols somewhere in the manual pages, six symbols here, and put them in the same order that they appear in the manual. Uh, so typically for this, uh, you'll hear maybe the diffuser give out the six. Uh, so I have Wisp, and I'm going to read these uh, across across reading order, using the terms I know them as. Uh, so I have Wisp, Kitty, Lightning. Uh, that is an empty star. Uh, double K and Broken Cane. Or broken three or broken R I guess any of those but those are my symbols so I'm gonna look on my grid here for those six symbols uh, I know empty star oops, empty star has to be one of these two here are my wisps kitty lightning you can already kind of tell where I uh, where I'm probably gonna be uh, double K broken three. Uh, so notice I have my grid of six here. Notice it can't be this grid of six because then I have two double K's and I don't have my lightning. So this is my grid of six. So as the expert I'm gonna read this combination back to the diffuser and he's gonna scramble this around until he gets that combination. So I'd read okay. Lightning bolt, wisp, double K. So we want lightning bolt first then Wisp, then Double K, so let's slide that up. Kitty, Star, uh, 3. So we'll put Kitty in place. Uh, star and 3 are backwards. Uh, easy enough to fix. We'll put one of them to the top, scoot this over, move the 3 back into place, scoot it back, drop the star. Now these 3 match the 3 on my manual here. I can submit and I'm done. Uh, let's look at another one. Uh, flat six, smiley face, paragraph symbol, copyright symbol, gamepad, trident. So here's my three, uh, three by two grid up here. Uh, get this out of the way so I don't know how to check it. So top line is copyright six trident. So copyright six trident. Bottom row is gamepad paragraph smiley. These two are backwards, so I need to reverse them. Move the gamepad up, move the paragraph under it, swap, and then put it back. Uh, the last one, we'll go ahead and punch them in and then we'll put them in after the uh, turn of the key. We have kitty, hollow star, wisp, broken three, double cape and lining. We have this one again, interesting. Um, so we'll solve that in a second. First, turn the key. Notice 1536. Can't let the clock annoy us right now. I have to deal with it for a second. 36. Click. Lights on. That's all you do with this one. Uh, 1457. We're going to need to pay attention to this again. Uh, so let's see if we can do this symbolic real quick. We have lightning, wisp, Double K, Kitty, 
star broken three again every single one of them this time I've had to do a little swap like this and you notice this does scroll it kind of left and right uh, on the line not a huge difference either way come on that one's done and this one wisp or lightning wisp double K kitty star cane done uh, that's symbolic password uh, if you look at this grid you may find it to be a, a little bit familiar reason being that excluding to clear it again uh, excluding this column here these six that I left unhighlighted are the same six in the same order from keypad and round keypad So if you happen to have those memorized because you played a lot of vanilla or whatnot, ooh, my blinky clock may make this a little more difficult. Let's turn this key real quick. Uh, so if you memorized keypad from the original manual, this may be, uh, may be a lot more simple. Uh, but that's symbolic password. You can see we've done three of the turn the keys in the meanwhile, and... Uh, one of the issues I have with this one is you notice I had to drop what I was doing. Had to stop what I was saying, stop what I was looking at, and just move and take care of these. Uh, turn the key is very much a, hey, pay attention to me now type module. So, something to be aware of. Uh, but that covers that in symbolic, uh, so that leaves us with wire placement. So let's take a look at it. Module has a grid of wires, eight wires. Uh, red, blue, yellow, white, black. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to figure out which wire color is connected to square C3. Let's do one on the back, actually. Connected to C3. In this case, it's a blue wire. So you're going to find the blue column here. And as you're getting started, what you're probably going to do is you're just going to read, okay, you're going to cut if, and then you're going to read the color and the cell. And if that cell has a wire that's this color, you cut it. So since we've got a blue in C3, we're going to go down this row. Cut if D1 is yellow. It's not, it's red. C4 is blue. Nope, that's red. D2 is white. Red. Nope. C1 is white. Nope, that's red. B3 is red. B3 is blue. C2 is blue. C2 is yellow. D4 is black. Nope, it's red. D3 is red. Hey, D3 is red, so we can cut this one. Uh, notice it doesn't matter if the other side may or may not match. If either end of the wire, since they all touch two squares, if either end is in a valid spot, you're going to cut the wire. Oh, and that's the only one I have. So we click it, and that one's done. Uh, let's hit this last turn the key. 54. 53, 52, 51. Uh, and let's hit these other wire placements. We'll hit this one next. Uh, the wire is yellow at C3. So going down the line. Yellow at D1, no. Blue anywhere, no. Uh, white at B2, no. White at C1, yes. Uh, we don't have a red, we don't have a blue. Black at B4, no. Red at C2, nope. Yellow at A3, A4. Yellow at A3, A4, done. Uh, usually I've seen this one done. It's kind of a expert just, or I'm sorry, diffuser spits out what color C3 is, and then the expert just starts reading. And then the diffuser tells them when they're done. Uh, however, I don't usually see it actually read off in this order. Uh, this one actually does have a uh, an embellishment, a cheat sheet, if you will, that is very commonly used, uh, which takes this grid of uh, coordinates and actually turns them into little grids like this. Uh, so I'm going to do one like this, just because this is how I commonly hear this one done. Uh, this is red as C3 is this grid here, which I have here. So is it diffuser, I'd say, okay, red C3. Then the 
expert's just going to read to me the cut colors for each row in order. So for the top row, I cut if it's blue, red, blue, skip. Blue, nope. Red, nope. Blue, yes. Skip, so we don't cut that under any circumstance. Uh, next column is yellow, yellow, skip, yellow. Yellow, yellow, skip, yellow. That's a match. Done. Now we'll do one more with the embellishment page here. Uh, C3 is red again, so it's the same little grid here. Again, reading top across and then going down the lines. So blue, red, blue, skip. Blue, red, blue, skip. Yellow, yellow, skip, yellow. Yellow, yellow, skip, yellow. Skip row three. Black, white, red, white. Black, white, red, white. And that's wire placement. Um, as I always do, I suggest you start with the standard module, standard uh, modules manual for wire placement. I did mention the uh, alternative way of giving it out because it is so prevalent in the communities that I've been in. I've seen it used almost exclusively in that sort of uh, cheat sheet fashion by experienced diffusers. So I did want to explain what they might be expecting. Or if you happen to diffuse for someone who's played a while, that's how they're probably going to give it to you. Uh, now, that's symbolic password and wire placement. I do want to show one more thing about turn the key. So let's pull that back up. Just turn the key. Because you can do it on some, uh, don't turn the key before the light comes on. Does it help you? Uh, I've got a 1542 here. Uh, I've got a 1736 is my first uh, time. Uh, now notice, 1736 is a while away. So that's going to take, you know, two minutes of me. Let, let, let's say that, you know, I had this particular turn the key on and bomb with something else. Well, that's fine. I can probably keep myself busy for two minutes. And you know, just pay attention to it when it's time. On the other hand, look at the one in the top left corner. Three seconds left. So, ignoring the fact that I've got a strike and it's going to move a little quicker, that means I'm going to spend at least 19 minutes on this bomb. Even if I finish every other module in two minutes, I've got to wait for that clock to go down to three seconds before I can finish that particular module. That is one of the two big complaints people have with turn the key, is if you get a really small time, then you're going to have to sit it out. Conversely, if you get a really, really quick time, like uh, this was a 20 minute bomb, say I got 1959, then I better hope I see that as soon as the light pops up, or else I'm never going to get to it in time. Uh, so that's one concern. I'm actually going to strike to move this a little quicker. Uh, the second concern is if you miss something, and actually I shouldn't have done that because I've got two strikes and it's going to uh, penalize me for what I want. But let's say, you know, I go through, I'm doing on something else, maybe I've come over here to disable the alarm clock, and I get up here to 1736, but I don't click it right at 1736, I miss it. Well, obviously, that time I clicked at 1735 gave me a strike. But here's the thing, because I missed 1736, the key doesn't stay turned, which I think you saw uh, when I got my strikes before, is if I turn the key at the wrong time, it doesn't lock, it doesn't complete the module. Uh, okay, here's an example uh, that'll work a little better. This is 1845. Uh, I'm going to let the time skip to close to 1845. All right, we're coming up on it now. Well, let's say I miss 1845. I missed it. I'm going to get a strike. I missed it. I'm going to get a strike. I missed it. I'm going to get a strike. I missed it. I can't ever punch it in because the timer is never going to go backwards to where I need it to be, and it's going to give me a strike roughly every two seconds. So if you miss that turn the key the bomb's over. You failed. Um, that is 
a huge problem I have with the module. I have the same issue with turn the keys. Um, because those are the only, uh, except for uh, a couple needies, those are the only modules that if you miss something, you can lock yourself out of the bomb completely. Having strikes to give doesn't fix it or give you a shot to get it right. You're just done. Uh, because of that, you're not going to see turn the key played very much. It basically turns every bomb into a hardcore for that module, and it can give you a lot of downtime at the end if you get unlucky with the clock. So, I did want to show that one, though, and explain how it worked for those who do want to play with it, or play around with it, see how it works. Uh, but that's it for me, actually. Uh, thank you for watching. If you have any questions about these three questions, comments, concerns, or suggestions, please leave them down in the section down below. And until next time, this has been Elias. Thank you so much. Have a great day, and don't explode. Bye.